Right, on to Australites. Australites landed probably five, six thousand kilometers or so from the impact site. Uh, Australites are generally a lot smaller than other tektites. You would expect this, it's a lot further away. But also the melt was formed first and this probably encouraged smaller sized um, and predominantly spheres to be uh, forming. Um, the the um, the Australites are very interesting. They're very well studied, very well uh, very well understood, probably most understood of all the tektites. They re-entered probably at the highest velocities, uh, we're perhaps talking 10 kilometers a second or so, um, 9, 10 kilometers a second, something like that. But a very high velocity, very low angle of re-entry. The smaller specimens often um, melted on the front rather than spooling they melted on the front and this melt flowed back and formed a flange um, larger specimens over around six grams in size are always coarse similar to the biscuit form of philippine tektites but uh, often a, uh, a a slightly different shape but essentially formed in the same manner um, so I, I got a very big collection of Australites, just a few. These, these are a load of uh, lenses. Lenses are formed when the flange has disappeared. That's broken off. You've just got um, these very simple forms left. Um, what have we got here? Oh, I mean, these are um, predominantly dumbbell shapes, a variety of uh, shapes. You, you get the dumbbells, teardrop, sand spheres, same as everywhere else, but predominantly spherical forms, smaller spherical forms. Um, okay, this is a mixed bag. We have some um, button shapes there, not perfect buttons. Um, this is uh, quite a nice little button. You can see the flange there. Um, on the larger size uh, specimens, we have some here, slightly squashed. These have formed uh, cores, so these are, I don't know how well you can see that, but the, these are all cores. They've lost the anterior and the, the rounded posterior remains on these. And what have we here? We have lots of, um, these are mini, mini buttons if you like. Well, lots of little flanged forms. Very, very nice little specimens these are, and so some some bigger buttons as well. So the, these are the most distal um, true tektites that we have. Very unique forms, and the reason why we don't fly, find these uh, flange forms in more proximal settings, say in the Philippines, we don't find these. Uh, flange forms. They extend to um, Java just about. The Java ones um, in Indonesia, they're kind of a bit intermediate between say Philippine tektites and Australian tektites. You do get some uh, flange bodies there, but generally not. Generally they're pretty much confined to um, Australia. They were traveling at the highest velocities. Um, the, the other tektites deposited more proximally they simply weren't travelling at the correct velocity and the correct re-entry angle to produce these uh, flange forms. Um, so these are pretty unique. Even other big impacts um, haven't produced these flange forms. It probably requires fairly special circumstances in terms of impact angle and in terms of um, uh, velocity that they were traveling at to produce these and of course maybe they were produced in the North American impact but they're simply not preserved these are very very delicate forms they're going to be the first to be basically etched to nothing so uh, you probably wouldn't really expect them in these uh, very old impacts of about 35 million years old so um, yeah, that very briefly concludes the Australian tektites. I haven't gone into a great deal about the um, Australian tektites simply because there is so much literature on these already and it's very well understood how these formed.